let's just have a look at this um, the exponential function, specifically the function with the base e. Okay, so these graphs are drawn exactly the same way as a base two or a base ten. The thing to consider is that really base e e, as I said previously, the number e is just we'll call it approximately two point seven. So it behaves a little bit like a base two or a base three graph. So you have a look at the the um, the graph down here. There's e to the x here. So again, go through zero one. It approaches the x-axis um, as an asymptote, increases steadily as uh, x gets bigger. So it has exactly the same properties as the any base function, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 10 to the x. Um, so we treat it in exactly the same way. I guess the reason why the e to the x function is used so regularly um, is when we get to our log laws, we know then that if we want to rearrange our graph, we get our log base E, which is our natural log function. Okay, so let's have a look at some applications. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the transformation processes. So just remember there's a, there's a couple of ways we could approach this. Let's take our, I guess, x dash y dash approach. Let's consider the original graph, y equals e to the x. And we've got our new graph y dashed equals 2e to the 3x dash minus 1. So let's rearrange this right hand one. y plus 1 on 2 equals e to the 3 hex to have exactly the same form as our previous. Okay, so now if we equate our x and y values, if you like, we get y is equal to y dash plus 1 on 2 and x is equal to 3 x dash so let's just get x dash and y dash equal to so transpose x dash would be equal to x on 3 y dash would be equal to 2y minus 1 so now we can see I think more obviously or clearly hopefully what the dilations and transformations have been so the x value is being multiplied by a factor of a third, which means it's dilated by a factor of one third from the y axis, two times y dilated by a factor of two from the x axis, and then translated uh, one unit negative x direction. Okay, so that's certainly one way you can do it. The other way we could perhaps consider it is just to consider the graph of y equals 2e to the 3x plus 1 and decide that I could write that as 2 times f of 3x, sorry, minus 1. So looking at this information, the 2 at the front is by a factor of 2 from the x. Now the 3 inside is by a factor of a third from the y, and that's the trick. That's why sometimes we miss the third, which is sometimes a good idea to get it over here in this form on the right. And then we've got one unit negative, oh, it's a negative y direction. So let's fix that mistake up. Look at that. That's bad. We've uh, subtracted one from the y value, so that's clearly, well, we don't have to rub out the, let's grab out that x. It should be the negative y direction, shouldn't it? Sorry about that. Okay, so there's the method by which we could do it. All right. So example four, how's that different? Sketch the graph of, marking the asymptotes of y-intercepts and state the transformations, the domain and the range. So assuming by state the transformations, it means we started with the graph of, we'll start with y equals 2 to the x. OK, 
Okay, so let's get the graph sketching done. So what can we know? We see the graph has been shifted down two units. So we get y equals negative two. And we've got our asymptote in place. Let's find some intercepts. So if um, x is equal to zero, y is equal to two to the minus one, minus two, which is a half minus two, which is which is equal to negative three on two. So I get the point uh, zero, negative three on two, which seems to make sense about there. Um, and then what we've got, we've got our x-intercept. So let's put y equal to zero. So I've got zero is equal to two to the x minus one, minus two, two equals two to the x minus one. Since the bases are the same, we can equate the powers, so 1 is equal to x minus 1, so x is equal to 2. So I get the point 2, 0, say about there, and negative 3 on 2. And then our graph obviously um, has that shape about it. Yeah. So the domain and range, domain is equal to R. The range is from negative two up to positive infinity. Uh, so we've done that, give exact answers, we've done that. Range, domain, state the transformations. So I think in this one from the graph we can see, I'll come over here. So we've moved it, the negative one, Let's move to the right one unit and the negative two is we've moved. Let's put the negative y direction by two units. Okay. Um, of course, that's always assuming we're starting with the standard graph of y equals two to the x, which probably should have been in the question. All right, example five, let's finish off there. Um, state the transformations, mark asymptotes, sketch the graph. All right, so let's bring our graph out here. What's the first thing we've got? The graph has got a plus two, so that's my asymptote. It's moved up two units. So we've got y is equal to 2. So e to the minus x, so e to the minus x turns the graph from, let's go in here, so there's e to the x, e to the minus x brings it that way, and then a minus sign there flips that upside down so it goes that way. So that's minus e to the minus x there. So let's confirm that by getting a few intercepts. So if we get our y intercept, put x equal to zero, and I get two minus b to the zero, which is one, so it's equal to one. So I get the point zero, one, which seems reasonable. And if I want to get my x intercept, put y equal to zero, I get uh, zero is equal to e to the minus x, sorry, e to the minus e to the minus x plus two. So I get e to the minus x is equal to two. So again, log base e of two is equal to minus x. So let's make that a plus and that a negative. So e to the two is positive, negative, log e to the 2 is negative, so it's over here somewhere. So that sort of fits in. That sort of fits in here with that shape that we were discussing. So we approach the asymptote, come down. When we decide the points were, that's at the point 0, 1, and that's the point negative natural log of 2. 
zero. Uh, domain and range. So hopefully we can see over here the domain is again our uh, the range is equal to down there at negative infinity up to positive two with a round bracket. Check using the case. So make sure you give that a go. Okay. So both of those. Um, I don't so much both. So this one here. Make sure you check the answers on your case calculator. So key things to remember, the maximal domain is R. The range is just dependent upon how far up we might move our graph, or down for that matter. Um, so the dilation factor at the front is obviously from the x-axis, uh, plus B inside is a translation left and right, which is this one here. The big capital B there is moving up and down. Um, and then obviously if we've got a, a, a number multiplying by a negative value at the front of either the x, well it flips about the x-axis. All right. So, there we go. There we go. There we go, mate.